Fantastic. Um, I think it's live on my end and are you guys hearing me okay? Yes. So you're set to go live on Facebook. So awesome. welcome Chad. We're so glad to have you. Welcome back. Thank you, Linda. It's really an honor to be here. I'm so thankful for you to provide this forum, this platform for everyone. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really good to be back with everyone. Um, it's been, I think, about a year since I've done a post with you guys. And um, wow, what a year it's been. Uh, um, so I, you know, I started on this study uh, on Donald Trump clearly after he got elected, and um, I don't actually believe that um, astrology is kind of designed for prediction. Um, but what it does seem I do think is happening is that we're moving into a new level of consciousness, ultimately a new level of awareness. And um, I think this next slide will help. Um, and that in that transition that we are in as a species, ultimately, um, there's, you know, greater, more or less um, advances, like people are in different places in that evolution of, um, of consciousness. And I think before we get into to Trump, um, I think what we can see is that we're, we're in an archetypal moment in history. Um, the climate crisis and the mass extinction that's taking place today um, is a once in a species event and it's being caused by us. And to give you just a quick example, like it took us 250,000 years to get to 3 billion people. Um, and that was in 1960. And in the last 50 years, we've doubled that population. So um, what it seems as though is happening is um, it, it's similar to the birth process itself. It's the success of the growth of the fetus that triggers the contractions from the womb that uh, for, you know, push the baby out into the new life. And what I think we can see happening is the success of the growth of the human species, um, triggering the contractions from mother nature um, for us to be born in some way, to be reborn in this instance, because I don't think our destiny is necessarily on Mars or on other planets. Um, it seems as though what needs to happen is um, a transformation of consciousness in our worldview, the way that we understand who we are in relationship to the world which is um, going through a drastic you know, transformation over the past 500 years, just in particular, um, 500 years ago, we thought we were the center of the universe and that everything rotated around us and the human being was the highest form of life and the center of the universe and everything was purposely focused on us. And then we you know, drastically moved out of that worldview into what now is that a worldview that we're one tiny planet amongst trillions of galaxies with no meaningful relationship to a cosmos that's indifferent to our um, experience. And that, that orientation is a big part of the crisis that we're in, um, our crisis of worldview, crisis of meaning and purpose and our ability to make, make sense out of what our symbols are communicating to us. So what I think what I think in part what's happening is um, Donald Trump represents this um, the hypermost kind of point where the the modern human emblematic and the white European American male psyche um, has differentiated itself separated in a sense from the world in which it, it was given birth by so we see ourselves as separate from nature um, and separate from each other and that we have a dominant position that we can control ultimately um, nature and in Trump's case he feels like he can control everything it, it seems um, so like that is a big part of the shadow he, he seems to represent a big part of the shadow of what we are striving to transcend um, this limited kind of adolescent like childhood um, orientation towards the world and the sense that we're separate from it and that we can control it. Um, what the astrological perspective does in its essence as a 
as a as a perspective, as a technique, as an understanding of the world, um, it 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 dissolves all of the boundaries that we place onto each other, onto nations, onto um, gender, all of that. Like if you look at a birth chart, it doesn't differentiate uh, from woman or man or black or white person. It um, is just an archetypal picture of and um, orientation of care and love ultimately from the cosmos to that moment or to that person. And it, it um, demonstrates a interconnectedness, a relationality, um, not, a, a, it, not a separateness, which is where we are kind of stuck in our, in our worldview today. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I covered this. I mean, it's just basically the climate crisis and mass extinction. This is happening ra rather rapidly, um, probably due to us. And then the mass migration that's happening also because of global climate um, warming is creating a nationalism. Uh, well, it's not, it's not the only reason, but a strong nationalism pull is happening now in part because we've reached this like global position of planetary population because we were migrating out of Africa and then out of Europe and then to America. And that was kind of the last place that we went. And in a sense, uh, we've colonized the entire planet now and we're no longer, uh, you know, that idea of nations and everything is really ultimately going to be limiting for the future because uh, we're all in this together. The earth is our home and not, and we're all being um, affected by the climate changes that are undergoing by the entire planet, not just by any, any individual nation. So um, that's just kind of a preamble to where I think we're at. And then part of why this is what I think is happening in that, um, okay, so psychologically what's taking place is that astrology has been with us from the beginning and before the Copernican revolution and, and you know, the further you go back, we're just caught in the fate of the planets. It's like, um, you know, you may be able to adjust a little bit to your chart or whatnot, but um, by offering, you know, using talismans or whatnot, but like that ultimately the chart is a faded dimension. But what's taking place in the modern era is a, a, a movement towards individuality and free will, um, that the human being has a more autonomous nature to it. And that is, reflected in the birth chart. But what's critical about this transition and the differentiation between old astrology and modern astrology is the emergence of the modern self and the discovery of the three outer planets that reflect the depth of the human psyche, the transpersonal nature of the human psyche that has been developed in the last 500 years. So there's a, it's a new paradigm. It's a new understanding of the astrological worldview and and the human worldview in that we are a new autonomous being with a new relationship that uh, can move in, in when I say new relationship um, with more agency, we have more free will to engage in the archetypal complexes denoted at our birth chart and in our transits to move into concert with them to move into a participatory relationship with the complexes in our birth chart and the complexes uh, that are being, well, that are in the birth chart that are being activated by the, by our transits. And so instead of being blind and a puppet to them, um, we can move into a co-creative participatory conscious relationship. And I think when I, with the title of this talk, what I'm saying is that Donald Trump represents, um, a symbol of the need to integrate this perspective so that we're not a blind puppet of the archetypal complexes in their shadow form um, and in our expression. So I hope that wasn't too long of an intro. And if you, if you guys have any questions, I know it was kind of a lot, um, feel free to answer anything, but otherwise we'll just go on. So like um, what I think, um, every chart has an extreme noble and potential shadow dimensions to them. And Trump, I think in large part due to his inability to kind of look at himself critically, 
uh, he projects and embodies a lot of the shadow dimensions of his complexes. So I'm going to go through this chart, but it's going to be a very negative interpretation and it doesn't have to be all of these complexes that I'm mentioning have noble expressions. Um, but we're going to, it's just hard for me to see the nobility in, in the way that he's embodying this chart. So, um, to begin with, uh, he's born with the sun in a conjunction with Uranus on the north node. The moon is on the south node. He's actually born um, within hours of an eclipse, a, lu a lunar eclipse. Uh, and um, it's interesting because, you know, in a sense, the lunar dimension of his being, the relational dimension, is is something that is uh, the, probably the primary problematic dimension of his of his psyche and or his psychological constitution. And um, in addition to the Sun Uranus conjunction, which corresponds to his erratic, Uranus is potentially erratic, uh, unpredictable. Um, that seems to be the way that he likes it. Chaos, uh, he likes to be unpredictable, all of those things. But it's in the trine to Jupiter, which is the supportive um, inflationary dynamic that we see in the um, hubris, the air against the inflation, the self-centeredness, um, Jupiter expanding the self in this case. And it's also in a conjunction with Chiron. Jupiter is in a conjunction with Chiron. And that seems to indicate potentially the woundedness of his, you know, in his hubris, his uh, inflated nature. And um, then uh, I think before we go to the Mercury Neptune, what's, what's an important part of his chart that's I think missed by a lot of astrologers that Rick pointed out a long time ago, which is um, that Pluto is exactly at the midpoint between Mars, which is rising, and Saturn at 23 Cancer. So the exact midpoint between Mars at 26 Leo and Saturn at 23 Cancer is 10 degrees Leo. So the midpoint between Mars and Saturn is exactly on his natal Pluto, which draw, draws all three together and gives you like, you know, the Mars rising is that just you know, constantly embattled and battling and attacking other people. Um, other people, clearly the moon, it's, it, Mars is in the trine to the moon. It's so easy for him to do this. It's, it just comes naturally. He just easily attacks other people. It's just, you know, every day. So, but it has like an intensity to it and a relentless combative nature to it, which you see with Mars, Saturn people. Um, Roy Cohn, his big um, uh, mentor who taught him how to never back down, had a Mars, Saturn opposition. I think in a T-square with the sun but you know, clearly a, a Mars-Saturn person where it's like constantly fighting, they feel more comfortable in that fighting position where if they're attacked, there's a constant reaction with resistance. And um, with Pluto, it gives it a, a viciousness and intensity that, um, yeah, it's uh, over the top. And the sun, I'd also point out here that the sun is in the semi-square to Pluto. So it's a two degree semi-square to Pluto. And that is also a part of his... Um, kind of intensity and uh, yeah, vicious kind of um, attack mode. Uh, and then I think the, the primary um, aspect that we really are challenged by every day with his rhetoric <clears throat> is the Mercury uh, square, <clears throat> excuse me, Mercury square Neptune which is in the conjunction with Chiron. So it's actually Mercury square Chiron as well. And, but which you know, adds to the potential woundedness of his mercurial functioning. But what's I think really clear about the Mercury Neptune aspect is that um, it's the delusional thinking. Uh, it's the, the cons constant um, believing of one's own narrative. Like, Neptune is the imagination. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Neptune's the imagination. It's our our <clears throat> are the way that we imagine the world, our stream and flow of consciousness. It's not consensus reality. Saturn is the law, the superego, but it's it's our, our service. It's how we show up in the world, and it has to do with what everyone agrees upon is the truth. Is a Saturn function of reality, whereas. Neptunian reality is your imagination and your dreams and your aspirations and the way you'd like things to be. But 
aren't necessarily the way things are. And <clears throat> this is, I think, one of the strongest um, signatures that we see consistently um, and is one of the most problematic um, yeah, dimensions of his psyche. So, um, <clears throat> see if I missed anything. That's the basic, basic, uh, outline. And what's interesting is that Richard Nixon also had, um, he had Mercury, uh, Pluto opposition. It's, it's different. Um, so, Nixon's was like a, a power hungry Mercury. Uh, Jupiter inflated it. Jupiter Pluto has a, an intense power um, ambition to it. And um, again, Mars gives it that um, aggressiveness. He, um, it's interesting, Nixon did it in private. If you listen to the Nixon tapes, he was extremely vulgar and attacking people in private. He just didn't do it in public. Whereas um, Trump is uncensored. It's just all out there in the open. Um, Today, actually, he doubled down on what he's being impeached for and said it publicly. He actually admitted to what he's being impeached for publicly um, today. So again, just like doubling down on his own narrative, but we'll, we'll see what happens with all that. I'll get to it in a minute. Sorry, that was a little bit of a tangent. Um, if we go back, just like do a little retroactive look at, um, at Trump's uh, presidency, the Great American Eclipse that happened on August uh, 21st, 2017, the path of it went through, um, it started in Lincoln City, Oregon, and went through Lincoln, Nebraska, and crossed Fort Sumter, South Carolina, right near the end, which is where the Civil War began. And this was uh, just a few days before um, the Charlottesville uh, incident. and. What's interesting about this, it seems as though not only did this kind of reveal the racist, you know, unconscious psych, you know, dimension of, of America, I mean, it's clearly there from the inception, but it had been repressed. And I think Trump sanctioned it with his rhetoric and his being and, um, and allowed more of it to come to the forefront. So we see more of the unconscious racist shadow of, of the American psyche coming to the fore over the last few years. And not only that, it's, um, you see the power dimension of the United States and its history and it's the unconscious ways in which we've tried to control the world through coups and stuff. Um, so I think a lot of that is also being revealed. So, and not to mention the United States is going through its Pluto return over the next five years. Uh, we're 250 years old. It's a 246 year cycle or it's some, you know, somewhere in there. And, um, who knows? Like this is definitely a, a a a pivotal moment in history for the United States of America and in its relationship, power power political relationship to the rest of the world. So, what's interesting is that the eclipse itself was at 28 degrees Leo and was conjoining um, Trump's natal Mars and his ascendant, which again just kind of sanctioning the violence, sanctioning the uh, attacking. Um, orientation towards um, uh, other people, Mexicans, black people, Jews, however people are dividing things up. Um, whoa, I missed one really important thing with Trump's natal chart. I'm just going to go back there really quick. Um, so not only is it Mars, Pluto, Saturn midpoint, it, because it draws them all together, um, he's born at the very beginning of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, 1946, Saturn-Pluto conjunction um, that went from 46 through 48 that Israel is born with. This is the founding of the Cold War. Um, the Iron Curtain was established then. So like you see again, walls, boundaries, othering, splitting, divisiveness. Um, the the Saturn-Pluto complex corresponds to psychological splitting more than any other two planets. And what happens is, is the, the split, the division comes from Saturn, the boundaries, and then we tend to put the, project the good on the inside of what other bound, you know, whatever boundaries, whether it's white people or the United States or whatever. And then we project Pluto, what we fear, Saturn fear and what, of evil, the potential for evil of Pluto onto the other so that the other needs to be destroyed in order for our survival um, to, take place so like you can see that as a strong part of 
Trump's, I would say, racist psychology, um, that he is a divisive person. He's constantly psychologically splitting and othering not only black people, but it's, it's everybody. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. And um, the fact that this is also happening, we're beginning to have a Saturn-Pluto conjunction now. It's, it's, it's much more um, tight at the moment, but the earliest, earliest stages um, were just after this period. So um, anyway, the fact that the eclipse was on his Mars, on his ascendant, it seemed to bring out an unconscious dimension of his Mars um, that sanctioned it for our society to embody it more directly. And so there's a series of eclipses now that have corresponded to some of the important um, pivotal points in Trump's presidency, of which Charlottesville is definitely one constantly referred back to as a pivotal moment where people change their opinions of Trump. And the Helsinki summit with Putin is another one. This is right in the middle of the Russia investigation. And very few, no, no one, none of his advisors were saying that it was a good idea for him to go to Helsinki and meet with Putin, but he did it anyway. And not only did he meet with them, um, he agreed that Putin didn't meddle in the election and, and on national TV in contrary to what Dan Coates and what his own national security advisors and intelligence uh, advisors had been telling him. So he went against his own our own intelligence agencies and sided with Vladimir Putin on national television in front of everyone. And it was a big moment. Um, you know, his presidency is filled with them and it's, it's a bewildering barrage. But this, I think when history looks at his presidency, they're going to see Charlottesville and Helsinki and now this phone call uh, with the Ukrainian president as pivotal, pivotal uh, moments. And what this reveals is the unconscious dimension of his uh, lack of integrity I and mean, Saturn corresponding to one's character, one's uh, integral, you know, or dignified dimension. Um, and this eclipse is revealing the shadow of that, I believe. Um, it was a part of the crack that started to reveal um, the you know the deep lack of integrity that that Trump uh, embodies. So if we move to this this most recent eclipse, it happened on July second um, this year, and it was at ten degrees Cancer, just two degrees off of his natal Mercury, and again revealing um, the unconscious dimension of his corrupt mind and the slip of the tongue. I mean, ultimately, it's like. Um, clearly he does this all the time, but it seems as though this one may have more sticking consequences or more lasting Saturnian consequences, which is interesting. Here, I'm going to go back to that because Saturn on the day of the release, I mean, this is when it was, I think, coming strongly into the media, maybe the 17th, 18th, whatever, Saturn was stationing direct. So it was beginning its forward motion after having been opposing uh, Trump's natal Mercury for the past like a year and a half or so. And what happens is it comes back to the fifth, like five degrees of opposition. So 13 Capricorn to eight Cancer is a five degree opposition. And that what we see, what we see in personal transits is the three to five degree orb as being the operative orb. And like with Saturn and with any planet, actually it's like, outer planets, if they go past the exactitude of the alignment and then um, and it's out of orb, let's say, and then it comes back to the fifth degree of orb and then stations right at that point, often we see that as being like the most potent point of the transit because if if someone has like failed to integrate what the transit seems to be asking of one, um, then that tends to be where the chickens come home to roost in essence that like, you, you know, you, you can't, if you haven't integrated what's necessary, you're going to bear the consequences of not um, integrating it. And so after two years of investigation of him colluding with uh, the Russian government to infiltrate or to meddle in our elections, what does he go and do? 
he asked a foreign government to meddle in our elections, to dig up dirt on his on, on Joe Biden, his front running opponent. And um, today, if you haven't heard this, just he in a press conference like thing, he um, he actually not only did he admit to it, he suggested that not only should Ukraine continue to look into Joe Biden and his son, he asked China to do it. Um, if you don't know, China is an authoritarian regime that um, doesn't allow freedom of, for its people. And that's what all the protests are in Hong Kong about. And um, so he's not only is he siding with authoritarian government, he's asking them to do an investigation on his political rival. Now, from what I understand, this is illegal. It's a campaign finance contribution, but if it's not illegal, it's, it's definitely... Um, against the constitutional oath of sense of like, um, you know, not uh, uh, baiting with the enemy or whatever foreign powers in our in our national elections. I mean, this is what, you know, it's kind of the one of the central aspects of the American democracy is that it's we're our own sovereign nation and we're not run by kings. That's what the whole American experience is. Uh, devoted to so it's just I mean the ironies here are unbelievable um, if you look let's just say at how Trump came to power on a racist lie about the first black president not being illegitimate that he wasn't actually born in the United States is conspiracy theory and he peddles this for seven or eight years comes to political power gets elected president and then what is he worrying about from day one? The legitimacy of his own presidency, because it's scarred by the Russian meddling. So like, it'll forever be that way. Um, and then this, you know, Trump is one of the most corrupt presidents we've ever had, if not the most corrupt. And where is this going now? Like he's, he's never mentioned corruption as being an issue to giving any other country money, like say Saudi Arabia or anything. Um, but all of a sudden corruption is a big issue in Ukraine and it's specifically around Joe Biden and his son. And all of a sudden like that, you know, corruption is going to be the sword that he impales himself on, which is archetypally very um, symbolically resonant because it is corruption that, you know, his corrupt uh, psychology ultimately that, is leading to his downfall. And ultimately, I would say that it's his inability to reflect on his experience critically and make adjustments. Um, that's what the whole depth psycho psychological project is oriented towards, is making the unconscious more conscious. And astrology gives us a template to do that. It's a precise you know, template for reflecting our psychology and how we can participate in its unfolding in time. So rather than being an unconscious puppet of them and living out the shadow sides, we can move into a new relationship to them. Um, so what's interesting, this was I mean, another fascinating thing is um, this was, they have starting to, you know, we'll be able to look back on Trump's um, tweets and everything that he's done and be able to correlate his transits. And I think there'll be a lot of really amazing evidence here that like, so this was his record setting tweet day, just May of this year. And um, he was super angry about Joe Biden getting um, uh, in, endorsed by the firefighters of the United States Union, firefighters union. And he just went off the hook. But like what I think we can see we will be able to see is that when Mars say transited uh, his sun or his moon or his Mercury or um, those types of things, we're going to be able to see that there was more anger. There was more violent or more angry tweets, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So this was uh, in May when Mars was conjoining the sun and um, square to Neptune and, and, um, this is today. So Mars is square 
to the sun and actually to Mercury as well. So the next two weeks, it's going to move further and further into conjunction with Neptune, but square to his natal Mercury. So right now it's at the midpoint between the sun and uh, Mercury. It's, I guess it's like one, I think it's one Libra. Um, but it's activating both the sun and Mercury, and we're probably going to see more um, you know, angry tweets and calling out the whistleblower and all these things that he's doing that are ultimately probably incriminating and getting him into further uh, trouble. So, um, yeah, more reason why we should look and try and move into a relationship with the archetypal complexes that are informing our experience rather than uh, being a puppet of them. And I guess, yeah, this is interesting. When Nixon got indicted, um, Saturn was conjoining his Pluto and it was opposing his natal Mercury. Uh, so the same similar transit that Saturn was taking account, the public account, the judgment, the law of his mercurial decisions, his decision to break into the Watergate Hotel and all of that stuff. So very similar alignments. Also, it was the beginning of a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. I mean, sorry, Saturn-Pluto square in 73-74 um, that we also are in today as a Saturn-Pluto uh, conjunction. And it's opposite <clears throat> his natal Saturn. And this is the main reason why I felt like um, he was, is not going to be able to um, survive, you know, uh, literally survive, but um, electorally survive his presidency because he is, has so little actual integrity and Saturn and Pluto together. I'm hoping, I mean, this is, it's ultimately up to us. I mean, uh, reality is a consensus phenomenon and it's, it's about our shared attention. It's the capacity for our shared attention that makes everything happen in the, in the world, in the history of life, uh, and human, human life. And um, what's happening now is, 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 is troubling to see in that um, we're so, we've been so gaslit and we're so kind of caught up in our own daily lives that we're literally not paying attention the way that we should. And I'm afraid in a sense that um, we're maybe not gonna rise to the occasion and, and hold them to account, but it's up to us. Like the, 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 the evidence is there. It's clearly an abuse of power. You know, the question is, will be this, um, are we going to allow our presidents to be able to ask foreign governments to, to uh, investigate our political rivals? Is that going to be okay? Because that's what he's doing. Um, and, if, if we don't rise up in a shared attention kind of way and hold him to account, he's going to walk over the Constitution and the norms, and we're going to live in a different political reality uh, over the next, you know, if he gets elected again, that's for sure. Um, one thing, actually, this is uh, his election transits. Um, so really interesting is the nodes are returning. So he has nodal return. So clearly his dharma is up. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not making predictions, but um, it's definitely going to be a karmic moment for him. But interestingly, his inauguration, I mean, well, I say, I shouldn't even write it this way. It's inauguration day transits for him. Um, hopefully not his actual inauguration. Uh, hopefully it's the day he leaves office if he's not impeached already. But what's interesting is that not only is Pluto opposing his natal Saturn, but Saturn is beginning to oppose his natal Pluto. And he has Jupiter opposite Pluto and Pluto squared Jupiter. So he has double Jupiter Pluto and double Saturn Pluto. So it's a mixed bag. I like to think that Saturn transits Trump Jupiter transits. Um, but He's born with the sun trying Jupiter in this really good fortune gambler's, you know, chart. And he's had tremendous uh, good fortune throughout his life. So, yeah, I'm, and I'm not making predictions. I just, it's just, it's just hard for me to conceptualize that Saturn is not going to get the upper hand here. And that, that he's actually going to be able to escape these transits and that we're 
going to be passive to the point where we allow it to happen ultimately. Um, so I hope that's not the case. Uh, let's see. One other thing. Um, this is also the Saturn return for his bankruptcies. They started in the early 90s. There's a New York Times article that says December 17th, he walked into the Tom Taj Mahal and um, he took $3 million from his father and bought $3 million in chips just to put, because the, the Taj Mahal was failing, and then he took the chips out and just left. <laughs> and so um, that was the way that they saved the Taj Mahal at that in December of 1990. Um, so it was the beginning when he began also probably to start to borrow money from the Russians and stuff. So we're at the Saturn return of that moment. Um, so another reason why I think, you know, uh, the time may be up for him. But this is another little interesting thing is that uh, an asteroid cartography trumps Mars midheaven line is it runs through Ukraine. This is the only, um, line he has that runs through Ukraine here. And it's interesting because Mars is like you know, the warrior, but midheaven career. And he, he did this, honestly, it's a self inflicted wound. Like there was, he, he, he got out of the Mueller report, even though he was guilty in a lot of ways, he escaped it because of William Barr and all of that. And um, instead of just like laying low and just like letting it go, instead he felt so, I think, um, that he was challenged by or going to lose to Biden, that he felt like he had to dig up more dirt. And then also potentially still wanted to discredit the Mueller investigation. Like he's still going around, he's sending Barr around to Australia and Italy and to try and like still discredit the Mueller investigation. So like, I don't know, he's, his, his, his brain is too much for me to um, comprehend. But at the same time, um, it's hard for me to imagine him escaping these transits. Um, and not being held to account by the public. So, um, yeah. Do you guys, um, oh yeah, last, last thing. Um, Neptune is beginning to square his sun. So this is a three and a half year, four year transit, and it could very well correspond to a psychological meltdown. Um, he, 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 you know, many of his aides are already kind of worried about that. And um, if you watched in the last two days, it's, you know, I would agree with them. I mean, he, the Mercury Neptune in his natal chart, he's, he's kind of always there, but the possibility, the potential for him to really psychologically dissolve and have a difficult time assessing reality and, and um, continually going into more delusion is a real strong possibility. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, some of the things that I, I saw just recently and yeah, does anyone have any questions or? Chad, how would you explain the loyalty from people who support him it just seems kind of irrational or i don't know um it's really intense so where in the chart could we see that that's that's a great 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 question um i would say in his son trying jupiter um is a big part of his like uh self-confidence um jupiter trying the sun it's a you know he his inflation his sense of self-confidence whatever i think that's a lot of what people are attracted to. It's like an illusion of wealth and security and um, you know, winning, being on top of it. Um, and then uh, the Jupiter is also in a sextile to his moon. Um, it's very, uh, Jupiter moon people uh, tend to be uh, supportive of others often, but also well liked. Um, both sun Jupiter and moon Jupiter um, tends towards um, just, because I, I think it's part because of that inflated sense of self that others gravitate towards. And they, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, what's happening, I think, in America and the United States, it's two things. Um, the majority of his base is um, uneducated. I mean, just to be honest. And um, they're, they're mostly poor and they don't have a lot of means. And 
Trump represents a strong man to them. It's just like that simple dichotomy and that like he's saying he's going to help them with their jobs. And that's, it's like a simple kind of, oh, I need a strong man, a daddy figure to protect me because I'm an infant, you know, uh, person that's at the will, the will of my society, that type of thing. Um, that's a big part of it. I, honestly, there's a strong racist component to it. Um, I think it's, it's largely unconscious. I mean, I have friends whose their parents are Trump supporters and they're, it's an unconscious racism. They don't really recognize that they're racist, but, um, but, but, but they are like, because um, the United States, like it was founded on racism clearly with, with slavery at its core, but we justified taking half of Mexico on the superiority of white people over Mexicans. We did the same thing with Hawaii and the Philippines. Um, you know, it's the same Aryan mythology that, uh, that Hitler was using um, that the white people are superior. And um, so he embodies a lot of that. And I think there's a lot of white people in America who feel they recognize that they're going to be the minority soon and they're clinging to this source of power that is claiming, you know, or telling them that it's going to help them protect and hold on to what they have because they're afraid of losing it. That's a big part of it. Um, the Republican party, they, they're not standing up because he attacks them and he keeps them at bay because he'll, he says he'll primary them and they're afraid to, to talk, to, to speak the truth against him, which is just unbelievable. And uh, it's probably the, the single most, you know, reason why this is happening. Like if there were just a few Republicans who got together and just, you know, bit the bullet and maybe they won't get elected, but they stood up for, you know, what's, what's right. Then this would, this would all be different, which may happen. I mean, it just depends on what takes place. I'm, what Trump did this morning is a little frightening because he literally tried to normalize in inviting foreign countries to investigate his political opponents. He said, like, he tripled down on what he's being impeached for, and he's saying, no, it's okay for me to do this. And it's, it's kind of the same thing he did with the Mueller investigation. It's like, no, it's okay for me to talk to Putin or whatever. And that whole type of uh, orientation for him it seems to work I, in, in, um, so far. I'm, I'm just really deeply hoping that the American people are going to recognize at this point that he's completely, he's out of control and he's, he's abusing his power as president um, to, to remain as president in ways that are unconstitutional. And um, I'm hoping that we can, we can stand up and hold them to account. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, yeah. Yep, that answers it, fantastic, thank you. Um, just another quick question, if that's okay? Sure, please. Okay, great. Um, I'm not in USA, I'm in Australia, but I'd just be interested to know about the impeachment process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, how does that take place? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so from my understanding, I mean, the House uh, votes on it first, and then they send it to the Senate, and the Senate um, will take it up as a trial, and the Supreme Court justice will be the residing judge over that trial. And so I think in the Senate trial, if it, if it goes that far, um, Trump may have the ability to defend himself in some way, to present a defense. But um, the way it will happen, from my understanding, is that there'll be articles of impeachment drawn in the House, and then they'll vote, and they already have enough votes, um, unless the politics change. Right now, they have the votes, and they'll, they'll vote to impeach him. And then it will go to the Senate and the Senate will take it up and they will be on the record. They'll have to go on the record and either vote for it or against it. And so two things are going to happen here. I mean, I, I can see a strong possibility for two different outcomes, which are that the evidence that still may be yet to come may become so damning that Republican senators actually stand up and vote to impeach him. And, um, to save what they can of the Republican party. Um, or they may not, they may vote for him and then he'll stay in office. But 
if the American people are aware enough, those senators who don't vote to impeach him, the Republican senators, they may lose their seats and the Democrats may take the Senate because the Republican senators chose to protect Trump when they should have fulfilled their constitutional duty. But that's, you know, we don't know. It, it really depends on the evidence. It depends on a whole, a whole host of things. Um, honestly, right now, the Republicans are frightened by the way Trump is reacting um, because he's such a wild card and they can't anticipate what he's going to do. So they're just silent. They're not saying anything until more things come out. So I'm, there's a possibility that Trump and, and Pence will get impeached because he's, he's implicated in the Ukraine situation. And then Nancy Pelosi would actually become president for the remainder of next year. And then, um, yeah, there's a possibility for that. And then, or, or, you know, the worst case scenario that he, you know, they just say it's okay. He gets elected again. And honestly, um, I would say that's, it, it'll do irreparable damage to the United States of America, what it, what the United States represents and its future. Um, I think we can safely say that because yeah, please more questions. I have I, a question. Yes. Um, do you look at the South node or the nodal axis in any, you know, kind of, kind of how you interpret things? Because I'm looking at that moon conjunct the south node, and mm -hmm. it just seems so reflective of just who he is, you know, in general and his behavior. Yeah, that's a really good point. Just on the level of like <clears throat> the south node is what we brought into this lifetime, past life area arena, and what we're familiar with, what we're used to. And in this case, he's familiar with being a child and an infantile kind of psychology. It very well may be the case that that's just something that he, you know, it's easy for him to go back into that, um, that state. But um, I, I mean, I, I've, I've just more interpreted it as, you know, the fact that he's actually born at full moon, probably just, I guess, like two hours or so before the moon actually went into the shadow of the earth. Um, so he's born literally just prior to a lunar eclipse and um that's um yeah i don't know it, it it seems to archetypal or just symbolically really fit or resonate with his um you know real wounded relational dimension of being it's like that's probably the core wound that he has very likely a, a fragile mother figure or a very you know distant mother figure um that didn't provide that like um just general sense of uh, belonging or um, yeah, sense of um, belonging in this, yeah, self-confidence in that uh, genuine sense of um, security of being, which he actually doesn't seem to have. He seems deeply insecure and the, the hubris and the arrogance is like a compensation for the, the insecurity that's at the root. Um, that, that seems to be more of what's happening in his psychology. But um, is, that, is that helpful? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm reading some chat things here. Is that, are those questions or? Um, are you, we have a comment, a comment from Della. Della? Yeah. You, great. Liz, you had asked about the impeachment and I was just reading about it um, by like this political analyst because it's so complicated, all the things that are occurring, so I have to actually like read a narrative yeah. that somebody wrote. But um, mm -hmm. so the impeachment process isn't a criminal trial, and That's I just wanted correct. to add that um, into like the criminal trial would come later, and then also the way he's tweeting about the impeachment, it show he's trying to like convince the public that they're trying to make him a criminal when it's actually not a criminal trial. So oh, yeah, mm -hmm. good point. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's not a criminal trial, it's a political trial. And that's where it really depends a lot on us in the sense of, are we contacting our senators? You know, does the polling push the senators and congressmen, senators in particular, to vote to impeach him? Um, that's where it really will be a lot of, you know, our capacity for shared attention and to hold, you know, hold that, 
for him and our political system. Um, honestly, this is, it, it's probably one of the most frightening things I see about this is that, um, like how, I mean, I think Trump has really inspired a lot of political reaction, particularly women and, um, you know, uh, minorities coming out and, and that's just, it's amazing. It's so wonderful. Um, I'm I'm just a little afraid at of or concerned about the 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 lack of of I mean honestly I felt like we should have been in the streets a while back like there should have been more protests there should have been more conscious conscientiousness around the abuses of power that that he has already done and that we should have been more there should have been more unit unitive un, uh, united um, orientation towards protest that hasn't happened. Um, and that's, it's concerning, honestly. Um, cause I, I feel like it, it, it reflects a fractured dimension of the American psyche and a bewilderment, a overwhelmed nature. And we're just caught up in our own kind of narcissistic, our own little worldviews in a sense, and our own, you know, daily needs and, you know, but not staying focused on the big picture, what's important and, um, the abuse of power that he, continues to do so um yeah like uh it's all a pl it's a political trial and um hopefully actually when he does if he like, let's say he gets um ousted by election and some you know someone else wins um the the fact that he has double saturn pluto on the day that he would leave office is actually a good sign in the sense that um he may actually be put on actual trial at that point because like the um, Stormy Daniels case that Michael Cohen is spending three years in prison for that he's, he's, he's implicated. I mean, he's a co-conspirator in that. And the only reason he's not, wasn't put under trial for it like Cohen was because he's president. So like he's literally already guilty of something that Cohen is spending three years in prison for, but um, he can't be tried for it until he leaves office. So it may be that on just January 21st, uh, 2021, that he gets arrested, actually. He may leave office and get arrested for that, um, that case in the Southern District of New York. But it's, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Great, great. Um, what exactly is he being impeached for, or are, are there too many to mention? No, I mean, um, the, the central issue will be, um, or it will, it'll be, I think it'll be an abuse of power will probably be the, the article. Um, what he did was he, he asked the Ukrainian president to do him a political favor by giving him dirt on Biden, but he was holding $400 million in military aid above his head. Like he, he, was, he was not releasing it to him and asking for the favor before in essence that he would give him the money to defend himself against the Russians. So like Ukraine is in a hot war against Russia, Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014, annexed Crimea, took, took part of their nation and, and they, they're trying to take more. They're still there. It's a hot war. There's been 13,000 people killed, um, Ukrainians and they're, we're their only lifeline for military aid. So they were waiting on our money and military weapons. Um, to help them fight against the Russians. And Trump is holding that over his head saying, okay, but if you give me a little dirt, I'll be more likely to give you the weapons you need. So it's an abuse of power. He's using taxpayer dollars for his own political gain. Um, that's, it's basically an abuse of power and corruption. So, I mean, there's a whole list of other indictments that they could put on there, but like the obstruction of justice stuff, the Mueller report, I'm not sure if they'll do that because they, I think they'll try and make it as simple for the American people to understand as possible because we're so kind of ignorant right now. Um, so that seems to be where they're headed. But honestly, he just admitted to it today. Um, he, he straight up admitted to what they're charging him for in public and, and encouraged it. He, he suggested that the Ukrainians should still do it. So I don't know where we're going. Like, um, I'm just hoping the American people will see this for what it is and that it's, it is literally abuse of power. Otherwise, 
you know, the president from here on out will be able to go to any other nation in the world and say, hey, can you dig up some dirt on my opponent? And it's just ridiculous. I mean, China is the most corrupt, you know, nation on the planet as far as uh, freedoms and political, you know, democracy, anything. It's like no one has any rights. China is so crazy. They have 5G everywhere now. Like, and they're, they're, um, they have uh, facial recognition scanning and they're monitoring everyone and everyone is on a credit system. So you're, you know, like here, like your credit or whatever, but like your credit, it's, it's, it's not just tied to like, you know, whether you pay your bills or not, it's tied to your social activity. So like they're monitoring everyone. If you walk across the street when there's a red walk cross and you're not supposed to walk across the street, the facial identification gets, it sees you and it docks your credit. So your social engagement, the way you behave in society is, is directly attached to your credit and they're monitoring everyone. Now this is who we're going to ask to dig up dirt on our political opponents. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty shocking where we're going right now. Um, but what do you know? This is where we are. Uh, reality is changing really fast. So hold on tight, stay aware, stay focused. Shared attention. We got to keep this guy in check, and I hope we can do that. Because otherwise, we're going to end up in a place where uh, our children are going to embody, you know, and, and you know they're going to uh, look up to this type of behavior. And uh, yeah, we're going to. It's not a pretty picture where we're going with a misogynistic, racist uh, person leading the world. Um, not to mention he's a climate denier. So, yeah. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of your meeting. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, it was as a pleasure. Usual, thank you. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to catching you next time. And Great. Um, so thank you and bye for now. Bye for now, Linda. It was wonderful. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye. Be well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.